Hello my YouTube lovelies and welcome to this episode, Spick and Span. Uh, before I carry on, I'd just like to ask you if you have not already, uh, please subscribe and um, if you like or dislike the content, give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down and um, that'd be very much appreciated. So this episode, Spick and Span, um, to be honest with you, I really didn't know what to do in this episode and um, was somewhat um, bemused as to what to do and how to go about doing this episode. Obviously everything to date has had a purpose and I suddenly got to this one and I thought well what is this one about? Now I'll tell you why I'm a bit confused and why there is this hiatus. To tell a story if you go back to season one of the build all of those episodes and even the episodes that we've got now because they are all shot in the present i.e. the piece the camera that we have now is shot in the present but obviously looking back at footage that was taken over two years ago so the first build season <clears throat> I did those episodes, obviously doing the piece to camera, etc. And because they were all fresh and new, each episode that I did, I made a title for it. And I came to, what was it, episode 14, I think it was, and I decided to end it as one season and then start a second season, give myself a bit of a break. Because we're now at, what, this is episode... 12 I think of season 2 so quite a few episodes just for a build of a van but yeah season 1 I named the titles after I edited each one and came up with a title now when it came to season 2 I had to sort of think of names ahead of time so I'll try and put the link up here in the corner but there was a video that I did which was called coming soon on red pill in motion and because that was a sort of advert and a sort of um, a trailer let's say for the season two and all of the things that were going to come along I had to preempt all of the names of the episodes and all of the titles and in my infinite wisdom, having gone through all of the footage on my hard drive and looked at all of the bits and pieces, I don't know, it came to this one and for some reason I came up with this title, Spick and Spam. And I get to it now, as of today, recording it, and I'm thinking, well, <laughs> what is it all about? What was I meant to cover in it? I really don't know. And the reason why I'm a bit confused is because the next episode that comes is called Finishing Touches. And so there's things that I'm going to talk about in this one that I guess really could have been done in the next one. And so that's why I got a bit confused. So, you know, this would be a fairly short one. I say that, but then you watch this, it'll be 10 minutes later and we'll still be gassing away. Anyway, we'll try and make this a short one. And to pad it out I think in my head the reason why I had it a spick and span was because there was a point within this part of the build where I did actually empty the van so I'd built it and then emptied it and whilst it was empty I was able to sort of clean up a few mistakes that I'd made and clear up rubbish from bits of build that I'd done in situ and whilst the elements of the furniture were out of the van, etc., um, I was able to sort of give it a bit of a clean up, etc. Hence the title Spick and Span. So.
So, where do we go back to? We can go back to the summer or May of 2019. Um, if memory serves me right, that was um, around about the time of Camp Quirky. And that was actually my first van meet, the first one I ever went to. So, you know, talk about dive in the deep end. That was my introduction to van life and van meetups, etc. was the biggest of all. And I figured that when I was going to that... Um, you know, I, I had in my head that I was going to be going in and out of vans, ideally. I didn't know that was going to be the case, but that's what I was wanting to happen, to be able to look at vans. And therefore I thought, well, it would be nice for people to maybe come and have a look at mine. So that kind of gave me a bit of a, a kick up the, um, the proverbial to kind of get things moving and try and get somewhat nearly finished. So we had the the three last jobs, so the three last episodes of things where I had those done commercially. And so it was basically time for me to sort of do a bit of finishing off. So uh, what I decided was that I needed to basically um, put said ceiling in here. Um, because all of this time, even with the skylight in, all of this was just still just insulation. And in order to get this in, um, it was easy for me to be able to take out elements, i.e. the kitchen unit here and the wardrobe at the back, etc. I wanted to take out the bookcase, but that wasn't possible. So what I did was I stripped all of the furniture. Now, as I've said in previous episodes, everything is designed so it can actually unclip. So there was me sort of testing the theory, I guess, to some extent, to see whether or not elements of this furniture could come out of the van and all of this left hand side of the van uh, was fine it wasn't a problem however the right hand side uh, had to remain and the only reason why that was was because obviously with the installation of the diesel heater below the sofa and the connection of pipe works etc to the ducting all of that pipe work is kind of interlaced within the elements of furniture and yes I could unclip all the pipework and everything like that but I didn't want to go to those lengths so I guess it is yes still removable all of the items on this right hand side but it would require a bit of sort of jiggery pokery and taking things out in order to make it portable so I kept this side in took all of the left hand side out and then basically had myself a fairly empty van and then proceeded with putting the ceiling in. Now originally what I was going to do was uh, just put the sheets of ply, so this above my head I think if I remember, remember right it's 5.5mm um, or 5mm um, and I was just going to screw into the ribs with self-tapping screws but um, I tried a piece and it just looked really bad and obviously with this kind of philosophy that I had with not having screw heads where, wherever possible um, in the end what I did was I got a small piece of I think it was 12 mil but it might be 9 mil shutter ply which was quite bendy and I cut that into a sort of 10 centimeter strip and ran it across and screwed that in the beams of the ceiling and then with those pieces of timber at regular intervals up and down the van I was then able to to run in the um, the five mil on top so I start with the center I mark a center point as best as possible from the bulkhead and then basically came to the front edge of the um, skylight um, and then another piece with the hole etc i worked it all out with the distancing i wanted to get as best as possible a full 
eight foot length in so from the front of the cab all the way sort of finishing back here somewhere is a an eight foot strip so i marked the, the, that out um had the five strips so i think they're cut at sort of 25 centimeter widths which are the same as the widths of the boards on the the walls uh, cut out the strips um cut out the hole for the aperture for the skylights and then um, I laid those down in the workshop and what I did was I always had this idea of the the, the finish um, rather than it being wooden I wanted it to be as close to white as possible now obviously when you look at it I and mean, you can see in the ceiling it's not white but there are elements and traces of white and so what I did was I painted all of the sheets white, so I laid it down on the workshop floor, painted it all white, waited for it to dry, and then each individual piece I then sanded back. Um, I originally did it with a machine, but it was it was sanding it back too much, so I think I just did it by hand, um, and sanded back the paint, and then what happens is is that paint only sort of stays in the sort of the grooves and the sort of the the knots etc so the white paint then basically picks up all of the grain uh once i'd got that sort of desired look to it i then got some glaze which is what we use in the theater trade which we use to basically make any surface uh shiny i stage floors etc I then glazed the uh, surface so as you can see there is this sort of this reflective property to the ceiling and you can see with the lights behind me how they're reflecting on the ceiling and that was the sort of look that I was after was a as much as possible a reflective ceiling. Um, once that's all uh, painted and glazed I then used a nail gun and then just nailed that into those wooden beams uh, on the um, ribs of the van so therefore again eliminating any screw heads to try and keep it a nice clean finish whilst I had the opportunity with this left hand side empty I then figure let's work on the door so um, I had thought about for a while uh, covering the door with like a vinyl or something with some kind of scenery like woodland or a um, I don't know some sort of countryside scenery where sat in the corner of the sofa I was always looking at this I don't know whatever you want to call it this picturesque scenery um, but it was going to be quite expensive and um, in the end uh, I just decided to just go with the timber and to tie both sides of the van in so again I just copied what was done on this side here uh, strips of timber I think they were cut again at 25 uh, centimeter depths to them um, run some battens in on the ribs of the door so I think I had four battens or something like that if memory serves me right uh, four or five and they ran vertically and then the 5.5mm um, was then run across and again stapled in so there were no screw heads cut out the hole for the door handle and the other little bits and pieces little curves etc they were all cut out by jigsaw and again after that's put on that's then given a clear satin uh, finish with varnish I then also used the opportunity at this juncture whilst the kitchen is out and the wardrobe and the partition wall between the bedroom and the wardrobe etc whilst all these elements of furniture were out i used the opportunity to basically glaze everything sorry not glaze uh, varnish everything so um each element of furniture including the right hand side the sofa the bookshelf etc whilst there was that space i then used this opportunity to give everything a varnish and so it was all finished off and Camp Quirky was kind of my sort of goal on my deadline um, so that when I went to Camp Quirky I was going in a van that was I guess what 80 80% 80 finished um, so the only thing that was showing in terms of 
the underbelly, so to speak, was the um, the reflectix behind the um, light box here, which the light box wasn't put in at the time. So that's it. So spick and span. It's still a long video, 15 minutes maybe, um, but um, we'll end up there. Uh, so one other process of a van now at this stage almost finished. So all the cladding done, the ceiling done, it's looking almost finished. So in next week's episode, finishing touches, we'll look at the last few details, bits and pieces that went into sort of like finishing it and completing the van. And then we'll end on 14, which is all to do with lighting, etc. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and um, I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one. Cheers. Thank you.